Hello and welcome to the NDTV Dialogues, a conversation of ideas. This week has been one month of that dramatic announcement by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where at the stroke of the midnight hour, 86% of Indian currency was basically reduced to worthless paper. This week, the Prime Minister thanked Indians for their support to the yagna, as he said, against corruption, black money and terrorism. He also asked the youth of India, amongst his most vocal supporters, to be the drivers of change for the country. However, the other reality is also that of long queues continuing one month later, cash rationing and worse, deaths in queues. What is the big picture for India as a country now? Joining me tonight is a range of opinion. I'm joined by Shorya Doval of the Indian Foundation. I'm also joined by Arvind Gupta of the BJP, Kalikesh Singh Deo of the Biju Janta Dal, Yogendra Yadav, political analyst, and Raghav Jadda of the Ahmadmi Party. Shorya Doval, as a director of one of uh, the prominent think tanks right now, many say you all have a large role also in shaping some of government policy or some of the thinking within government. Your feelings on the big picture one month after demonetization, because economists seem to have slammed it, but at least popularly, in elections at least, the support seems to have been for the government. Do you think, as a former investment banker, that this will derail the Indian economy, as Deepak Parikh has said? Uh, no, Sonia, I would, uh, with all due rev reverence to the economists, I would tend to disagree with them. Um, I think this was not going to derail the economy. This will lead to some short-term adjustment that will uh, obviously have to take as the economy recalibrates to a new normal. And uh, once, once the new equilibrium is reached, I think we will be far better off than we have uh, historically been. So to that extent, I think that there will be some disruption, uh, but uh, derailment is probably too uh, powerful a word to use. The interesting uh, aspect is, of course, that when, I mean, and I can quote many economists, when you go from Amartya Sen, when you go from Paul Krugman, whether you go to economists across the world who have been writing about this as well, and now the ex-Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, not one economist seems to have actually come out in open support. Who are the economic brains or who are the people who are actually guiding the strategy on such a drastic policy that has affected every Indian? Okay. So, Sonia, all these economists who are now saying what they're saying have for so many years argued that black money is a big um, uh, anomaly in the Indian economy. Including Mr. Manmohan Singh, who I find his editorial today quite amusing, has suggested that this it has, uh, they have always maintained that there is, a di there is a distortion. But not one of them, and I repeat, Manmohan Singh, not one of them has suggested or done anything. Mr. Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister for 10 years. Not one of them has done anything to be able to correct what they all have said is something which is wrong and which has distorted the, the efficiency and the outcome of the economy, of the Indian economy and the polity and large. Here is somebody who has done something, imperfect as it may be, and now everybody is saying, well, you know, they've become the prophets of doom to say that this will be the end of the Indian economy. I, it is just completely beyond me, and since you asked me this question as an investment banker, as a, as a practitioner, you know, this, I, I cannot understand that how can theorists criticize, critique, and yet not come uh, when they were even in a position to have done something about, do nothing about it. Kalikesh, respond to what Shorya Doval said. You know, Shorya Doval himself admitted it's a perfectly imperfect uh, plan done, you know, uh, implementation by Mr. Modi. Nobody has a complaint about any action taken against black money. The argument is whether demonetization was the best way or does it have actually any impact on black money itself? If the operation uh, is successful, the patient is dead. No, the patient is not dead. I mean, you are you are calling uh, it uh, far mature, prematurely, I think. Mm -hmm. I think uh, all analysis and deep analysis that keeps going on every day, that keeps changing, numbers keep getting floated around. But basically, uh, the RBI governor said this week that 11 and a half lakh crores are back in the system. He also made the point that uh, growth will be hit in the short term, but he supported demonetization. And interestingly, everyone on this table has said they support the fight against black money, but implementation is the issue. Are those excuses? In that sense, is the opposition playing a double game of saying, mouthing the right things, but actually they're not putting their back to what the BGP would say is a revolutionary policy? Well, the RBI governor doesn't have a choice but to support his finance ministers and prime ministers' moves. He's so supposed I wouldn't to have give taken the decision, <laughs> at least on I, paper. I, that's, that's something in question. Look, the, as far as the fight against black money and corruption goes, 
I think my political party, the BJD and Naveen Patnaik, has been expressively clear that he is completely in support of any move against black money and corruption as long as it hits black money and corruption. There was a uh, disclaimer to that, that people should not be harassed. That the economy, the loss to the economy should not be more than the black money which is caught in the system. Now, my own personal view has always been since day one that there are too many loopholes in the Indian economic system for black money to be caught by demonetization, except that in transit. Just to give you a number, 5 lakh crores is what the estimation of black money was, even if that estimation was to be correct. At 2.5 lakh per person deposit, which is, which, is, which, with, uh, which, which is there without any questions, you only need 2 crore people to put that money in. That's less than 2% of your population. That's not counting the companies who have cash in hand, 30 lakh companies who have cash in but hand. But it makes it much more difficult. I mean, it, nobody can obviously erase it. It makes it much system. more difficult. It's a shock to the system. What's happened is many, loop, the many loopholes have allowed for a laundering uh, business to come up in the last two, three months. And that's, again, you know, that was beyond the government's comprehension. And it's not the intention of the government for sure. Uh, what will happen? I'd like to give the benefit of the doubt to the government to see what will happen by 31st of March. I doubt whether any money, much money will be caught in terms of black money. But what is going to happen is it has been a shock to the system. The extreme rationing of cash has led to the, uh, a loss of the cash being put back into the system. And if the rationing continues in the, in the banks, then people will stop trusting banks also. So can, can I come in here, uh, Sonia? Because there are two things, I think. There are many scenarios, and you know, first let's ex accept what all has gone, you know, in our favor as a country, right? Uh, fake currency out, terrorism down, terror funding down, hawala networks out of business. Uh, I mean, I'm surprised people are not talking about the famous hawala kings, you know, really running out of business and some even committing suicide. Naxals, uh, you know, in trouble because terror, again their funding is all the pipeline that uh, you know he's talking about are all stopped. Even if you know the Jandan accounts have had money in them, which people were really not using, though there are two very positive impacts of that. People are coming in the formal net. From the f you know five crore people who are in the formal economy, now it's the number can go anywhere between 15 to 20 crores. Mm -hmm. That's a big number, right? In fact, uh, uh, you were one of the few voices who spoke out very vocally about your support for this move when Prime Minister Modi first announced it. And perhaps Arvind Gupta does have a point to that, that okay, these small fish and these little details will happen, but in the big picture, that's not really important. Look at the huge gains. And in fact, interestingly, some government voices have made the point also on dowry, capitation, freeze, or some of the other uh, of the evils that you've seen because of the easy availability of cash will go away. I mean, we're into serious arguments yes. here. And uh, I don't think we should make arguments like terror down mm -hmm. and things of this sort. Because you know, this would invite only a silly retort mm -hmm. to say, all right, how many terror attacks have gone up? I mean, let's get into a more serious argument. But the Naxals, government is making this as a serious argument. The Home Minister said this. Uh, well, well, they're making it as a loud argument. But I do hope that on this table, nothing as silly as that could be sustained for even half a second. I mean, you know, these are silly reasonings. Let's get into the most substantive part. Uh, what is the main argument here? The argument is that it will seriously hamper and restrict black money. That was the argument put forward. And that's no, why we, uh, can I, can I yeah, complete please. what I say? Uh, and added to that was the idea that maybe, you know, fake currency would be stopped, that uh, maybe it will do something to terror money, etc., and that more transactions will take place through the formal system. Mm -hmm. These are essentially the rationale of the system. Forget the terror money, it's a silly argument. Uh, on the fake currency, yes, it has stopped. The only question is, what was the amount of that fake currency and what did you need to do? Did you need to dry the river in order to catch that one crocodile? That's an argument that needs to be made. Uh, we supported it initially by saying any measure to control black money should in principle be supported. It all depends on execution. After one month, what we can say is that it was a, as an idea, it was laudable. As execution, it's uh, as design, it's questionable whether you needed to do it at four hours notice in the manner in which it was done. Execution, I'm afraid, has been terrible, terrible, deplorable. Consequences in the short term, we can keep debating. In the long term, let's only say that it is debatable. So what do we have on the table? I think we are looking at a combination of 
very poor economics, very shoddy management, with solid PR and very clever politics. The question we should be asking at the end of one month is, how is it that something as big and as poorly done as this has survived one month? Why is it that it is popular? Yes, I'm saying on this show that as of today, this scheme has more takers than opposition. Is it a merit of the scheme? Or is it the real lack of any serious, credible, imaginative, energetic oppositional politics in this country? I shudder to think what would have happened if Manmohan Singh had announced this scheme. All of you and all of you would have shred it apart. Within 15 days, the UPA government would have been thinking of withdrawing it. It would have been the biggest joke in the century. I want to bring in Raghav Chatter also on that point uh, Yogendra Yadav had made as well on the lack of the opposition or an opposition leader who can actually convince the people that this is a bad idea and not seen for narrow partisan reasons. And that has been an issue because you've got, say, Mamta Banerjee and Arvind Kejriwal on one tangent, Nitish Kumar and Naveen Patayak on another tangent, the Congress has its own views, Mayavati, Akhilesh, etc. And the point Yogendra Yadav made also about the credibility on black money. So the fact is that there is no leader today tall enough to take on the prime minister in that sense. And that's where perhaps this whole issue about demonetization has become about we believe in the Prime Minister, so we believe in his scheme. May I just briefly comment on Mr. Dohal Yes, first? of course, and you can go ahead, yes. Uh, <coughs> see, since he says that Mr. Uh, uh, the former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, uh, did nothing to tackle the menace of black money, well, that is the very reason why Mr. Modi was elected, since the previous government did not do anything to tackle the menace of black money. In fact, corruption, etc. were thriving. But no, the but fact he made is, the point of Dr. Manmohan Singh's editorial. That's why he made that Right. Point. But the fact is that this particular government, apart from setting up that SIT, which was mandated by the Supreme Court, has also done nothing. And this step evidently does nothing to tackle the menace of black money. Now, the, uh, the arguments that are being made by eminent people like Amartya Sen, like Larry Summers, like Raghuram Rajan, KC Chakraborty, Meera Sanyal, Professor Arun Kumar, etc., have substantial facts and merits and reasonable arguments. The economists and the BJP spokespersons who are commenting in favor of this scheme only say that, oh, you know, it will tackle, it will solve the problem, but they do not tell us how will it solve the problem. You demonetize 500 and 1,000 rupee notes, you introduce 2,000 rupee notes, how, what benefit are you serving to the economy? That's one. Number two, as far as the opposition is concerned, well, I certainly agree that there are a number of parties who have lost the popular uh, support, who in pub as far as public perception is concerned, uh, have no locus standi to comment on black money and corruption. But I would still say that there are parties like the Aam Aadmi Party, which are fighting. We are a small party. We do not have the, the organizational machinery or the propaganda machinery that other parties have. We are fighting this battle. And just to, just to that's put an one interesting, more. That's an interesting. I don't know. I think I, Yogendra and Arvind are both smiling on that point I, on propaganda machinery. No, but I'm going to, I'm going to get. Uh, we've just got briefly, the, we, may I just I finish my point. This, now uh, look at this. Close. And yes. just to substantiate my point. Quickly, now, because I'll go back to Shorya. Though, sure. The BJP and the Congress both accept donation in cash. Around 70% of BJP's donation and more than 80% of Congress's donation comes from unknown sources. Nobody knows who gives them the, the money. Well, the ARP Aap accounts also disappeared on I'll their website I'll for I'll a while. Right. 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 As far as the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned and the capacity of the national treasure of my party, I can certainly say so, that 92% of our donations come through legitimate banking channels. 8% of it comes through cash. We disclose that 8% also to the authorities and we deposit that money in the so all, all, bank account. Everybody How discloses I, that. I, I, I wish, I I I wish an iota of what Raghav Tedda says were true. It should be a <laughs> lovely a day in this country. Are that you was eight, true. Uh, well, I can it, so it, sad. I can I don't want to insider, but you don't yeah. accept what Raghav says. Uh, look, I would not wish to turn this into a platform where we question all these things and get into a very side discussion. All I would say is if one-tenth of what Raghav Chadda said was true, I would be the happiest person. Shoda, just on the numbers, because again, uh, you've heard what uh, Raghav just said, that you know we've had many economists, you can't just dismiss all of them. Manmohan Singh, all right, is one aspect, the political aspect, but he is a former RBI governor, a renowned economist, and the other economists made the point. Just taking two numbers which we were discussing, one, the RBI governor saying 11 and a half lakh crores have already come back into the system. The Revenue Secretary, Hasmuk Adya, saying that maybe all the money that we demonetize will all come back into the system. People are asking then, when you talk about a fight against black money, where, where is this black money if all of this, this is actually taxpayers' money, as Mamta Banerjee would say, and you're making people, and 
The question of trust, which was brought up, I think, by uh, Manmohan Singh and other economists, that a government bears, or our Reserve Bank of India has a bearing of trust with people when you give them currency. And that trust, that sacred kind of uh, bond has now been destroyed because people are not believing in currency. So, Sonia, let me take your question in two parts. Mm -hmm. You know, earlier you had mentioned that the opposition should come together and the opposition is uh, d disunited in, in being able to make a case in point against this move. Let's understand two things. One, that this is an initiative that has been taken by the Prime Minister to try and weed out black money from the system. Probably the first tangible step by any political leader in this significant a manner. Political, uh, the, 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 the narrative of trying to find better ways to do this or trying to improve uh, if the economists, the politician want to come together to be able to try and improve how this can be implemented. I think that's a good debate to have. Uh, and I think the government should be open to, sub uh, to all suggestions that it receives from all quarters of society on how better to improve it. But just critiquing it and coming together to oppose it and saying, well, this is a bad move. Let's do nothing about black money. And let's do nothing about it. I have a problem with that. I think in the last few, and, and as one of your panelists mentioned, I could barely hear him, but said that this government has done nothing uh, in the last two and a half years that it has been. I think that, again, is, a, is, is, is not correctly stating the facts. If you actually just m map it down as to what the, the, this government has done in the last two and a half years in trying to weed out, uh, weed out corruption, whether it is trying um, to, you know, what, what, what the kind of uh, the, the atmosphere that you see in Delhi. Like I mean, look at, what look is at, the, look at the change in narrative in the country. Today we are arguing how better we should, as a society, tackle this menace. This narrative in itself is a huge change from three, four, five years ago when we were just talking about, oh my God, another scandal breaking, another, another uh, corruption coming, uh, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think you know whether it is whether it is making making uh, like, uh, you know part of corruption transferring right. of assets and income outside the country uh, a cognizable offense i don't think these are all initiatives mm -hmm. these are all initiatives in the right directions you get the other listening to what shori dover just said and perhaps that is a, that is a genuine point that it's true that at least the debate now is about how do we fix the problem of black money you've made that point about election reform and in that sense that's the next step but do you feel that now this is going to be a progression of logical steps and we're on a path now which where the honest are being rewarded that there is a sense where black money which had become almost virtually part of the game or part of the system as it were that in that sense prime minister modi has done what no other politi political leader could have done and we are now on a step which is only going to be progressive would you agree with that and what are the suggestions or what would you like to tell Shorya Doval about what you think should change? I agree that this is BJP's biggest propaganda strength as of today. What did the Congress do? Propaganda Nothing. is a bad word. Uh, well, this is their communicative strength, shall we say. What did the Congress do? Nothing. And the fact is Congress did nothing. Uh, the, but I was hoping that uh, Mr. Doval would actually give us concrete things about what did the, Congre what did the BJP do. SIT was mandated by the Supreme Court, not by the BJP. Lokpal, not appointed. CVC, CBI director, some of the most tainted officers appointed in those positions. On elections, it's, but it's great to say- But small things now when something like this, when this surgical strike is carried out, these small things are, seem irrelevant. Uh, important to understand the intent. Uh, if the intent is to deal with black money, you would have seen this government do a large number of things. Everyone in this country knows about the Mauritius route. What has happened in the last two and a half years on that? On elections, the government says, explain if you have more than two and a half lakh cash. Wonderful, to be welcomed, must be done. What about 450 crores that the BJP declared last year? Cash for which they cannot tell one source, they do not have a receipt to show. Why should that not be applied everywhere? That would show an intent. And about black money, just think seriously. Both BJP and Congress were held by the High Court of Delhi to be guilty of accepting foreign funds. What do they do? Both of them come together and pass a law. And they hide it under the finance bill, under the budget, so that no one would and notice it. Retrospective changes. But, uh, this gives you an idea of the intent. Yes, these may be small amounts. But if the intent was to extinguish black money, 
Imagine well, that. we would have expected a large number of things to have happened. Why are those things not happening? And why, finally, why do we have this, the Prevention of Corruption Act virtually being changed into Protection of the Corrupt Act? Why is all that happening? Well, do we look at that? When we look ahead, it's win-win for the country, do you feel? Uh, I, the real question is, what is the amount of this gain that we are looking at? There is no doubt that the, uh, there are gains. There is a cost. The pain, it's not just the pain, the, the cues, the deaths, the discomfort, the trauma. It's also the long-term cost of the economy. And I'm absolutely stunned that this government perhaps did not consult any serious economists. So either the PM was consulting some quacks or it was uh, self-medication. I mean, both of these are very, very dangerous. <laughs> As of now, till this date, we have not heard the chief economic advisor to this government, the only world-class economist this government can boast of, offer two words of defense to this.